Back in January, I created a video that showed viewers how to build VLANs and secure them using a UDM Pro or similar device. It is a great starting point for anybody looking to secure their network, especially if you plan on having IoT devices. If you'd like to watch that video, there is a link in the description. While many of you found that video extremely helpful, it was focused entirely on Wi-Fi. So today's video is gonna be sort of a part two of that where we're gonna show how to secure your physically connected devices on the network, which is an extremely important part of securing your home network. Let's get started. Hey guys, it's Tim Trish from Ethan That Blueprint. Thank you so much for devoting some of your valuable time today watching today's video. Now, if you're new to the channel, we focus on helping our viewers design and build a great network in their homes, specializing in new construction. If you find today's video helpful, please consider hitting the like or subscribe button so YouTube recommends it to other viewers. Now, if you found this video, it probably means you're interested in securing your home network using VLANs. However, like we did in the first video, creating the VLAN, building the firewall rules and applying them to your Wi-Fi networks is really only part of the equation. You also need to implement some of those security policies into your physically connected devices that are plugged into your switch. So today we're gonna focus on that aspect of VLANing, making your network more secure from a physical connection standpoint. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the network looks like that we're gonna be using today. Um, it probably looks fairly familiar uh, because it's a, just a spin-off of what we did in the VLANing video with one specific difference in, and that is I created a camera network and called it VLAN3. So again, just highlighting this, if you wanna see how all of this was created, how the Wi-Fi networks were done, how the firewall rules were done, go check out that VLANing video. It really is a step-by-step -step on how to do this. Um, it just isn't gonna cover the camera network. I added that specifically for today's video. The other thing I wanna call out that's part of this slide is you'll notice that the camera network is part of our networks, but it's not part of our Wi-Fi networks. I, don't, I do not have a Wi-Fi network that is going to use the camera VLAN, all right? Now, little asterisk footnote here. That's not to say you can't, right? But we're talking about physical security in this video, so I'm not gonna be talking about a Wi-Fi camera network. I don't have any wireless cameras to connect to my network, but if you do, you can absolutely just create a Wi-Fi network and tie it to the VLAN 3 or whatever VLAN you use for your camera network. All the rules will apply, everything will still work. Today, we're gonna to focus on the physical port security, so I do not have a Wi-Fi network that includes the camera VLAN. Um, I like to include this, this slide here too because it's, it's just a nice way for you guys to see the rules that were added. If, in case you're building this in your home, you got a one spot you can go and see all the rules. So what I'll call out here on this slide is the top section there where you see the white writing. Um, that's what we created in the previous video. That is what was all done as part of the VLANing video I did before. However, the bottom part here is what I've added to my firewall rules in order to get this um, new camera network to also be isolated like the IoT network. So in our setup here, the camera network can't get to anything but the internet. And if you're on the camera network, you can't get to the UDM Pro, you can't log into the network, you can't do anything. You can only get to the internet very similarly to how our IoT network is set up. And so I'm just putting this all in one area here so you guys can see those, but we're gonna actually dive into the interface and talk about it there. This is just kind of that summary page to, to help you guys in case you're, you're building your set of rules at your house. Okay guys, let's go ahead and dive into the UDM Pro. So one thing I just wanna uh, show you guys here, we are running network version 8.1.111. So if things look a little different from my previous video, we are running a newer version. I believe I was on 8.0.26. So we're, we were running version eight in both cases, but things might look a little different in this version, um, just so you guys know. All right, so let's just talk about generally how these devices communicate to each other and when you want a trunk port versus an access port, and then we'll get into how to configure it. So if you look at our diagram here again, 
Um, you have our UDM Pro talking to our 16 port switch. Now, we want all of the VLANs to be able to communicate between these two devices. We don't want a VLAN to be left off, right? So typically when you have a router plugged into a switch like this, this is considered a trunk port. We want all the VLANs to be able to communicate on that port. That is, that's what makes it a trunk port. Now, very similarly is where our AP is. So like we showed in the, in the diagram, our access point is actually has three VLANs tied to it. So I need three different VLANs to be able to go across this line. That makes it more of a trunk port, right? We want the, all the VLANs to be able to communicate off this. We don't wanna prune them off and make it so only a single VLAN can, can communicate because we have multiple VLANs talking. So in your home setup, typically where your trunk ports are gonna come into play is you're gonna do it from your router to your switch from your switch to your access points, and then also from switch to switch. So if this was a little five port switch I had maybe on my entertainment area where my Xbox was plugged in, switch to switch should also be um, set as a trunk port. We want all those VLANs to propagate down to the other switch. We want them all to be able to communicate. However, for our camera here, our, in our example, we don't want all the VLANs to communicate. We only want VLAN three, our camera network, to go across this line. It's different than these other, other areas of the network, okay? And so that's what I'm gonna show you how to set up. So let's go over into our ports area here. And this is something uh, Ubiquiti has done a really good job with. Um, they added this little port section that allows you quickly to get to your switch ports and configure them, okay? So if we click this little drop down here, you can see we are on the 16 port PoE switch, but I could switch it over to the UDM Pro and configure these. So if your cameras are plugged into your UDM SE, for example, this is where you would go to configure those VLANs on those ports, okay? Um, since my camera is plugged into my 16 port PoE switch and I have a UDM Pro, not the SE, I don't have any POE on those ports, and so I need to power my camera over here. So if I, we're gonna start with the AP, and then I'll go down to the camera and I'll show you the differences here, and we'll kind of talk through this, and we'll wrap things up. This is gonna be a pretty simple and straight to the point video. So if I click on the access point here, I click on this port, my stuff comes to life down here, so it's telling me that I've named this port access point, you could call it living room, you could call it whatever you want, but I'm just basically naming this port as an access port, access point port, okay? I can power cycle that, so if I come down here, I can click this, it'll actually turn the power off to that AP and turn it back on, which allows my AP to reboot. If you've ever got an AP stuck in a configuration setting and you need to reboot one remotely, you can absolutely do that right here. Now. The, port, the part we wanna look at is these two parts right here, okay? So our native VLAN. So this, this setting right here is what IP address we want the device plugged into here to get. So all of my access points, my switches, my UDM Pro, they are on my default network. So they are all pulling a 192.168.1. address. However, if I had a management VLAN, for example, like a lot of places do, they'll have a management VLAN that all their devices connect to, and it kind of isolates it to and allows that to be a little bit more secure. Um, I could choose that from the list. I would create my management VLAN, and it would show up in this list, and I could pick it. So you could see that I have the default network chosen here, which means that anything plugged into this port, anything, whether it's an AP or not, is going to pull a 192.168.1. address, okay? Then on this part here, this is what allows multiple devices or multiple VLANs to communicate on the port. You can see right here, I have allow all. That means all of my VLANs can communicate across this single port. This is where that is set. That's what makes this a trunk port. And it's a trunk port with its native VLAN, its default or its where it's gonna get its IP address from set to the default network. That is how that's set. If I click over here to the UDM Pro, okay, it's set the same way. I've just named it UDM Pro. I have it set to the default network, so it pulls a 192.168, or that's the default network that's talking on that port, and I'm allowing all VLANs to communicate across that port. This is where that's done, all right? When you get a switch 
from Ubiquiti specifically, when you buy a switch from Ubiquiti and you adopt it, all of the ports are gonna be set up this way. They're gonna be set up just like these here. You can see, as I click this, I've never configured this port. It just says port nine, it's on the default port and allow all. They're all set up as trunk ports by default and that's how it's gonna be. So if you wanna implement security, you're gonna to need to go into the ports you want security implemented on and you're gonna to need to turn off some of these features to narrow in what can communicate on that port. So case in point, let's talk about our camera here, which is on port two. Uh, and by the way, if you just click around, it allows you to click multiple ports. You can see that I'm clicking multiple. So if I went over here and clicked on my camera, it's not gonna show it correctly. This allows you to communicate, uh, configure multiple ports at the same time, uh, which we're not gonna talk about today, but that's why I'm kind of clicking in and clicking out. So I'm gonna go ahead and sit, hit this select all, and then I'm gonna click on my camera port. So just know if you go clicking around, you can actually click multiple at the same time. All right, so now we have our camera port connected. You can see I've named it IP camera. And if you come down here, I have it on the camera VLAN. That means anything plugged into this port is going to get a VLAN IP of 192.168.3. something from our DHCP server, okay? However, by default, it's usually set like this, allow all. We don't want all communication to be able to happen on this. We want only VLAN 3 traffic to happen. So we are going to block all other tagged VLANs on this port. Now you have three choices here. You can allow all, block all, or you could do custom. So if you did wanna do custom, you can select the VLANs you want to communicate on there. But in general, your cameras or your IoT devices that you only want to be on a single VLAN, you're just gonna come in here and select block all. That means only VLAN three or only IoT VLAN traffic can communicate on that port. So that is what is going to create the physical security on your switch. Very simple to do, but again, not intuitive if you didn't know to go look there. So as you start going into these in and adding the physically connected devices to your network, maybe you have a kid's network and you're, you wanna tie the port that's tied to their room to a, to a kid's VLAN, you're gonna to wanna to come in here and choose that port Come down here, choose the native VLAN you want it to connect to, and make sure you say block all. Where, the, where this doesn't apply is from device to device, like router to switch, switch to switch, or from switch to access point. In those cases, you want multiple VLANs to be able to communicate. Now, as you guys can see, doing this inside the Ubiquiti ecosystem is fairly simple. And it's one of the nice things about using Ubiquiti because you have a single controller talking to all your devices, you make a configuration change once, everything knows about the VLANs, and then you're just going through and kind of picking them through and there are nice drop down menus for you. It makes it very, very simple. But what happens if you don't have a Ubiquiti switch? There's a lot of you who don't because I've been asked this question before. So while I can't show you how to actually configure the VLANs in your switch, I do wanna talk about it a little bit. So if you're not running Ubiquiti equipment on your switch gear, you guys can actually make your VLANs work in your house with your Ubiquiti access points, maybe your UDM Pro for your router. So let's talk about that real quick. Now, first and foremost, you need to make sure that whatever switch you're using is a managed switch, okay? Managed switches allow you to log into them and make configuration changes. Sometimes it's via command line, sometimes there's a nice GUI interface, but regardless, you need to be able to make configuration changes to that switch. There are a lot of switches out there that we refer to as dummy switches that do not do VLANs. So make sure the switch that you have is capable of doing VLANs before you even try this at home. All right, so once you verify that you actually have a managed switch, how do you make a VLAN that you create in your UDM Pro-like device, talking to Ubiquiti access points, communicate at a port level on your switch. Now, the good news is it's not very complicated. It's actually a really simple thing to do. However, how to program your switch may be the complicated part, right? Everybody has a little bit different uh, look and feel when it comes to programming their switches. But basically, if you're, as long as your switch knows about the VLANs, you are going to be able to configure and make everything talk, even if you have a mixed environment. 
Now let me show you what that looks like on Alta Labs. All right, guys, so I know this is just one example, but the concept of what I'm talking about here will work with whatever kind of switch you guys have too. Like I mentioned, the only thing you really need to take in consideration is that the switch needs to be able to know about the VLAN. So in this scenario, you can see I have an eight port fully manageable switch. And if I click on my little icon here, this is my GUI interface that I have to work with. You can see VLAN is listed here. Now, this is gonna look different depending on what kind of switch you guys have. So I'm just gonna kind of show you what this would, how I would configure these VLANs in an Alta Labs switch. So right here you can see, if I do the drop down, I only have one. I have the default VLAN. There are no VLANs being done on this network. It is a flat network. They did not want any of the additional, you know, uh, separation happening on the network. So this is just as a flat network, okay? Now, if I wanted to add a VLAN, so this is, I want, basically what I want to do is I want to add the VLANs that are programmed into my router, in my UDM Pro, into my switch. And it has to be a like for like. So if I created VLAN 2 in my router, I need to create VLAN 2 in my switch. If I created VLAN 3 in my router, I need to create VLAN 3 in my switch. So that tagged traffic can go through these ports. It's the same concept though. There are trunk ports that all the VLANs can talk on, and then there are gonna be access ports where only the specific VLAN you program can communicate. So real quick, I'm just gonna go through it on here um, and we'll add some VLAN. So I'm gonna go over here by the little plus symbol here, I'm gonna add a VLAN. This is the name, so we're gonna do VLAN 2, and that is called IoT, and we're gonna hit add, just like that. So now it knows about VLAN 2, and we've called that IoT. So let's go ahead and add our camera network in there. So there's three, and this is gonna be camera, if I could spell it right, okay? So we have our camera. So now that has been added in there. Now I have three different VLANs, and just real quick, we'll go ahead and add 99 for our guest, right? If we had our access point plugged into the, one of these ports, it's gonna to need to know about all these potentially, except for, um, it's gonna to need to know about all the VLANs, right? So this is how I'm configuring this on the switch level. Now I wanna go into the port on our switch. So let's say my camera was plugged into port, let's just say it was plugged into port one. So I'm gonna click on port one. I'm gonna name this port camera. Okay. And then I'm gonna come down here and choose my native VLAN. So you can see these are the same sort of things we we're seeing on the Ubiquiti side. So we have our native VLAN. So I'm gonna say that's three. Okay. And then allowed VLANs. I don't want any of these other traffic to be able to talk on that port. I only want my camera. So I'm gonna basically say allowed VLANs is three. Everything else we're gonna leave as default. And then we're gonna go ahead and say save. So now port one, is on VLAN three on a non-ubiquity device. So if I plug my camera into that port, it this switch can now communicate with my UDM Pro, understand what VLAN three is, receive an IP address from the UDM Pro and assign it to my camera, which is plugged into this port. All the same firewall rules that are happening on the, on the router, all that stuff is still gonna continue to happen because that is happening over here in that router device. The switch just needs to know what's plugged into it and what VLANs are, are flowing through it so you can assign them to the ports, right? And that's that. In your switch, you'll have a version of this where you would assign, list all the VLANs you have in your router, VLAN 2, VLAN 3, VLAN 99, VLAN 100, VLAN whatever, and then you can give them names. And then once you know about it, then you can go to the individual ports and assign those VLANs, either as trunk ports where all VLANs can communicate, or a single isolated VLAN, like in the case of our camera. That's how you guys do it. If you had an AP plugged in here as a trunk port, your UDM plugged in as a trunk port, and your camera plugged in an access port, everything would be able to talk just like you want it to. So it's very doable. It's just, you're gonna have to get into two different interfaces to make that happen. And I hope that helps you guys as you're planning out your network, uh, if, in case you're using different devices. All right, guys, I hope that helps you out. I, I know it's simple. 
And I probably could have just went in and said like, here's how to do the VLANs. But I like to give my viewers a little bit of a backstory. I, I get backlash for it for talking too much, but I like to paint the picture. I think a lot of you guys that come to this channel are newer in the Unify space. And so I wanna be able to paint that picture for you. So hopefully this all makes sense. If you have questions, please leave them down below. I'll do my best to get to them. I love answering you guys' questions. Um, I hope you found this video helpful and we will see you guys next time in a future video.